Greetings, everyone. It is such a pleasure to be with you today. On behalf of President Obama and the entire administration, I want to thank you for the warm invitation to address this distinguished body. The theme of this conference, Building Bridges of Hope, Success Stories and Strategies for Interfaith Action, describes perhaps one of the greatest challenges and opportunities of our time. How men and women of diverse religious backgrounds might reach across lines of difference and advance our common goals as human beings. So it's really an honor to speak with you and I'm delighted to be here. I also bring warm greetings from my president, President Obama. I've had the pleasure of knowing the president and working closely with him for a number of years. And I can say with great certainty that interreligious cooperation is both a passion and a vocation of his. We saw this in his address in Cairo, Egypt. And I see it every day through my work as the head of the White House Office of Faith-Based and Neighborhood Partnerships, where advancing interfaith cooperation and service is one of our primary goals. Please know that the discussions and outcomes from this historic conference will be considered at the highest level of the United States government. I also want to express my deepest gratitude to the Pontifical Gregorian University and to the United States Ambassador to the Holy See, my good friend, Dr. Miguel Diaz. Ambassador Diaz, you are not only the brains behind this conference, you are also a scholar and diplomat of the first order. And in your relatively brief time here in Rome, you have represented the president with a depth of wisdom, kindness, values, and uncommon skill. So I want to thank you and Dr. Marion Diaz and your entire team for bringing us here together, Julieta Noyes and Nathan Bland, Bridget Davis and John and all the rest. And I'm excited about your work yet to come. I am also very proud to have with us today the senior advisor to the White House faith-based office, Mara Vanderslice. Mara is one of the United States' leading voices at the intersection of faith and public life. And she has really pioneered new paths towards interreligious engagement in her role as the head of our office's inter international portfolio. I know she's very much looking forward to working with so many of you on our common tasks. Finally, I wish to express my thanks to all of you. It is truly a humbling experience for me to present to such a distinguished body, eminences and excellencies, clergy, religious, scholars, activists, politicians, and friends. Every single day, brick by brick, you continuously lay the moral and intellectual foundation of our public life and public dialogue. And you are the first responders when, for various reasons, that foundation is shaken. I know that you will use the opportunity of this conference to identify areas of common purpose on a range of issues, from the philosophical to the pragmatic, from development to the environment. I appreciate your good work and wish you every blessing as that work proceeds. As the individual in the White House with responsibility for partnering with religious organizations, it fills me with great joy and quite frankly no small measure of inadequacy to deliver these remarks to you here in the Eternal City. To think that a young man from very humble beginnings in the American South would stand just a few minutes away from St. Peter's Basilica and from the Colosseum and seek to speak to our common values in a way that adds even a word or two to the collective histories of those who have offered remarks in this place is an awe-inspiring task indeed. I lead the Office of Faith-Based and Neighborhood Partnerships for the United States government. In that capacity, 
I am tasked with assisting religious and secular community organizations in their work of serving people in need. We help these organizations identify funding. We work to build their capacity to strengthen them. We bring them together with one another across religious lines so that they can learn from each other's good work. My office is also tasked with assessing and improving the United States government's engagement of religious issues and religious actors around the globe. President Obama believes that faith-based organizations can be powerful catalysts for development and for social action, as we've heard from some of the speakers today. From rebuilding communities ravished by natural disasters, to responding to outbreaks of deadly disease. The President also believes that while faith-based groups are powerful as singular actors, they can multiply their impact when they join together across religious lines. Christians, Muslims, Hindus, and Jews retaining their individual beliefs, but coming together to serve communities around the world in times of dire need and also in our ongoing development work. My office seeks to create opportunities for this sort of interfaith engagement and really for the first time develop mechanisms for the United States government to systematically partner with religious organizations abroad. I will speak later about the specific ways that we're doing this and some of the concrete opportunities we have to partner with you. But first, because so much of what has already been discussed are the practical, the concrete, I'd like to reflect just a bit on the philosophical imperative before us. The reasons why it is more important now than ever for religious and moral actors to collaborate on the great social challenges of our time. And I actually do not wish to extol the positive virtues of interfaith cooperation. So many of us already know that when we embark upon an interfaith encounter, whether being invited to experience a Passover Seder that connects us with the stranger, the oppressed, and with redemption, whether breaking bread with our Muslim brothers and sisters at an iftar as we appreciate the strength of community and the holiness of the month of Ramadan, or whether sharing an Easter dinner between Christian friends as we reflect upon Christ's sacrifice, in those moments, we develop expanded compassion, deeper empathy, even a greater notion of the divine. There's little argument about this, this basic idea that as His Holiness Pope John Paul II so eloquently stated, by dialogue we let God be present in our midst, for as we open ourselves to one another, we open ourselves to God. So in general, the positive benefits of interfaith cooperation are known, and they should motivate us towards interfaith action.